Welcome to the special episode. It's the college years. It's a movie mama. It's a movie babies nights, nights, nights. I'm Devin. I'm Sean, and we're going to be talking about our viewing, our screening of the full length, brand new feature film, Power Rangers. We kind of tore this trailer up yeah, a we couple did. episodes back. Much hating. Uh, we finally saw it. And you know what? I think we liked it better than we thought we would. Yeah. Um, but the falling conversation is definitely going to be spoiler heavy. It's, it's more spoiled than the Easter eggs you're going to find next week that your children didn't. Wait, are p- adult parents listening to this podcast? Our downloads are being like broadcast somewhere in like India straight to a swamp. Can I admit something to you? Yeah. I have like thousands of iPhone and and iPod devices all over the house, and I'm just the only one I love it. downloading and streaming Well, these. you're our biggest fan. That's mm-hmm. cute. I don't listen to them. They're just going on <laughs> in silent, like, voids of space throughout the house. What if, like, in the year, like, many years later, because mm-hmm. you're watching that new uh, Mystery Science Theater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the future, mm-hmm. there's some guy who just has to listen to podcasts, <laughs> and the only thing, and the big <laughs> Meanie is just like, oh, I found the perfect podcast. Yeah. It's called The Movie Babies. These idiots just stammer and st- can't get anyone, any actor's names right or <laughs> any world events correct. Yeah, and then he just have the hardest time because he's like, I can't even make fun of you this. You can't heckle it because we're talking the whole fucking time. <laughs> There's not a... There's not a pause to be had. Yeah, exactly. We do regular shows where we review trailers you can catch all those on www.moviebabies.com. Again, not a normal episode. Uh, it's going to be a lot shorter, and we're going to review a movie. So if you're into that, continue to listen. If not, tune in next week for a regular scheduled Movie Babies, where we review the trailers for Unforgettable. And what was the other one? Girls Trip. Damn. Here's the show. <laughs> it's morphin' time. It's a lot of gold. This is your destiny. Let's go! Go! This is your time. We should clear our docket because there's a load of movies that we've both seen and we have not even touched them all. Yeah, yeah. We, okay, so flashback a couple weeks, days, I don't know, it all runs together now. Uh, we saw Power Rangers. We saw the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. We both, Actually, I guess they're not Mighty or Morphin. No, they're neither of those things. They're and just, for most of the movie, they're just regular teenagers. Not to spoil anything, but... If you're going for wall-to-wall Power Rangers, costumed up, doing ninja kicks, fighting putties, morphing and riding in zords, you don't get that movie. No. All the Power Rangers stuff were the most boring part of the film. Yeah. It was bad, bad action, and it was all saved for the, mostly the climax of the movie. It's a pretty great Breakfast Club remake, shitty Power Ranger film. Yep. That's pretty apt. All the teen stuff were... Surprisingly well done. I really liked the kids. The cast was great. They interacted well. I liked their, like, they were way more, their attitude was way more ramped up. They were, like, really digging into their misfit vibes. Yes. That was great. And then every time they went to the Power Rangers stuff, over explanations, yeah. they're doing this suit tease. Because they can't morph. Because they can't morph. Is that like a like a like a sex thing? I like, think they were trying to make it a puberty analogy, yeah, like but puberty it's very thing? clunky. Okay. Like, oh, we can't. You know, it's about that time. You kids should be morphing in your sleep and like waking up with a bunch of morphin coins in your hands. But no, they couldn't because they had to learn how to be a team. But then right away in their dino suits. They know how to drive. Yeah, yeah. They know all the tricks of of the, and maybe that's like maybe that's part of being a Power Ranger is like you know they're destined to do this stuff, so they somehow just intuitively know how to do it. Yeah. And then also when they get in the Zords, the Zords like connect to their spinal columns or whatever. It's like very 
Ghost in the Shelly. Yeah. So maybe the Zord is telling him, like, this is how you work me. Uh, well, now it's going back to the cell phones in the brain thing. Yeah. This is it's everywhere, Sean. You yeah. can't get away from it's it. Fully integrated. The movie, my biggest nitpick is that there's so many coincidences in this movie. They establish that Red is the hero. and mm-hmm. that and they The leader. Is, the leader. Yeah. And they established that the coins were supposed to go to someone worthy yeah. and, like, heroes. Mm-hmm. But that didn't happen. It was just randomly, we're all at this place together. Well, they're starting off, they're randomly in detention together. <laughs> yeah. So they're randomly at their breakfast club detention together. Mm-hmm. Then they're randomly at this rock uh, mountain together. Where they meet two more rangers that yeah. it's just like... Then happen they, to be hanging out. Then they blow up the thing. They find the coins. They randomly give the coins to each other. They just kind of grab them out of a pile. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They chip them out. And so the red leader is not a leader because he was chosen to be the leader. It's just because he randomly <laughs> drew the yellow, the red coin. Okay. So it just we just got lucky that the the right personality grabbed the right coin. Yes. Do you think it would be a better movie if he had grabbed the pink coin? <laughs> <laughs> and the autistic black kid had grabbed the yellow coin. And he's in charge, and he's just, like, very by the numbers, like... It would, it, 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 it could have gone so many ways. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my hands up and say, most likely the coins found them. They found the coins. It was destiny. It's supposed to be this So, way. Sean, is it also destiny <laughs> that they all die in their zords, and they go down this volcano pit, <laughs> and then all of a sudden they merge into the Megazord, which apparently... No one knew about Zordon in it tell them nope, all this. No, no, there's a lot of things that Zordon did not this tell is, them that they knew how to this do This is inherently. a surprise to everyone that they can be a Megazord, and it just happened by blind luck. Well, remember, so we watched the movie, and then we ran home, and we're like, let's watch the first episode yes. of the TV show. And remember in the TV show when Zordon's laying out the rules, he's like, y'all can't just jump right to the Zords. Yes. You gotta let Rita, like, escalate the situation and fight her on whatever means you need to, but don't, you can't. Turn into a Zord until yeah. You can't she makes just her monster go. Grow. Oh shit! There's putties, and then go. Oh, grab your dinosaur. Yeah, and they, this, let's clean this up and go home. Which is a strange rule to put on him, but I get it because it makes the show follow the format. But for the movie, yeah, it was very strange. It was like, like only a traumatic situation could cause the Zords to assemble or something. Yeah. Like, What's great about the show too is it has the kind of three act structure built into it. Act one, I want them in the suit. Yeah. Act two, you put them in the dinosaurs, mm-hmm. and then Act three is when they're the Megazord. It made it would have made perfect sense to like escalate the action that way, but for some reason, for some bizarre reason, this was not. It was decidedly not an action film first. No, it was a movie about kids dealing with like their emotions and being outcasts and how to forge a friendship with like strangers. Yes, which. I think it succeeded at, but it certainly alienated probably most of its audience. Right. Watching, I really enjoyed the original show. Me too. And I kind of want to just dig deep into that. Yeah. So here's my pitch for a spinoff Power Ranger podcast. Podcast. I bet somebody's doing it. Yeah. Somebody's well, doing everything. Well, man. it'll go along with our Fresh Prince podcast. We'll do, the the show will be episodes of Fresh Prince and Power Rangers, yeah, and we'll, we'll compare and contrast. <laughs> yeah, we'll alternate. Well, if Will and Carlton could be the Power Rangers in this situation, then I think they might have been able to convince. Uh, yeah. I was pleased with the fact that they chose to go the route of, like, Rita was the Green Ranger. Yes. Like, she used to be the proper, like, good guy Green Ranger back when Zordon was the Red Ranger, and that she just, like, decided she wanted more power, and that's, you know, Green Ranger pet capacity, like, got overly zealous and, like, tried to take over the world and stuff. But that is a cool way to compound the Tommy story yeah. that happens in the in the series. And I also like that they made Elizabeth Banks, like, very, like, jittery and jolty, and all her scenes were very much like a horror movie, like, especially when she's this, like, s- like sticky skeleton monster at the beginning. It was very Sam Raimi, like, Evil Dead. She had some great shots where they did it like the Alien film. Yeah. And she was, like, the, the xenomorph mm-hmm. above them. And all that stuff right. was sweet. I like the idea of her being the Green Ranger, but I feel like they just kind of like mentioned it at the beginning and then don't go anywhere with it. It doesn't yeah. really come back in a meaningful meaningful way. And she didn't get to like use her green dragon sword, so that was kind of like a missed right. opportunity. And from my memory, that green Power Ranger storyline in the original show is actually pretty awesome mm. with Tommy being a bad guy at first and like he's in the ranger outfit and he's right. fighting the other rangers. Yeah. And that's such a cool visual. 
And that's just a sweet storyline. And he has his own Zord. Oh, you kind of wasted it by making her the green. Right. Yeah, I guess they could have gone all out with that a little bit more. And then they just, like, resorted to that really shitty Goldar yes. character as, like, the main boss. And that sucked. That sucked really bad. It looked bad. It was... Action sequences were, like, way worse than Transformers. My beef with Transformers is, like, they move so fast and so stupid that, like, you can't you see what's, what's going, going on. on. And this one, I could see what's going on, but it's just, like, this is a poorly <laughs> I, planned I didn't action want it. sequence. Yeah. And the training sequence was bad too because they're like fighting they're fighting in a cave without their costumes kind of danger room mm, computer yeah. stuff they're it's not like, even fighting like real putties yeah and that's the point of the putties is they're like <laughs> the practice yeah i did like that the the team like move like in a good action montage you're taught like one you know sweep the leg oh, johnny yes. or like crane kick or whatever that and comes into play at that comes into play film. at the end of the yeah. movie and they were just straight up taught by alpha how to do a suplex <laughs> like straight up <laughs> WWF, Mr. Perfect, like, yeah. suplex. <laughs> and they do it in the Megazord, which is not <laughs> built to do a suplex. Yeah. Speaking of the Megazord, to play up the teamwork thing, each one of them controlled one part of the Megazord. Oh, yeah, which I liked and you did not like this. <laughs> I didn't like it just because of the logistics yeah, of it. It's terrible. Where it's like just walking in that thing mm -hmm. would be so hard. It'd be like left foot, right no, foot. No, 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 now you go. Now I go. <laughs> yeah, it would be a nightmare. But They just constantly fall over, which I, they do, I guess. Yeah. When they they kind of give it like this epic, like, here's what you've been waiting for, the Megazord. And they immediately and then fall over. Splat. Yeah. I like it because it's the it was the culmination the culmination of their like relationship they had to learn to like be a team so what better way than like you work the you work left the nut and I'll work the right nut if only we had some build up to that yeah well emotionally uh, we did but but action wise no, no. it wasn't I mean, there's two things I definitely want to talk about one of them was Zordon where they tried to do I guess make him more of an interesting ambiguous character right what were his intentions for assembling the team yeah and, yeah. and so he's like. He's pissed that it's teenagers. Right. And he's like, they're supposed to be heroes. Yeah. And I, you, I got these kids. Uh -huh. And he's doing it selfishly because he's just using them to morph so he can steal their power and <laughs> yeah. become a human again or an alien he, being So he again. can step out of the... He, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the one to try to explain this because I'm not going to do a very well, good job. And this is what I mean, too. Like, <laughs> the team stuff, awesome. Once they get into mm -hmm. this sort of, like, having to explain oh, yeah. what a Power Ranger is and how a giant head is trying to double cross them. Yeah, they should have just kept it like as simple, as dumb ass simple as the show where he explains it all in one Yeah, sitting. it's like you have a thing. Mm -hmm. Here's why we're doing it. Here's how it works. Here's the keys to the Zord. That's don't, <laughs> don't drive drunk. But like yeah, so, okay, what I think is happening is, so Zordon, when he was a Power Ranger defending Earth from Rita trying to like grab the power coin out of Earth's core Yeah. Something happened where he <laughs> he melded himself and the coins, the ranger coins, which he collected from his fallen rangers, into the ship, into yes. the Power Ranger spaceship, which is a new thing to me. I think they just lived in, like, a super mall in the show. <laughs> so he gets sucked into the ship, and then he wakes up, and he's in what's called the power grid, or the morpher grid. Kids coming back with the coins helps the first round of energy, like, awaken the ship and turn on Alpha. And then Alpha's like, oh, I know what's going on. I'm the ship's, like, C-3PO. Like, yes. I'll, I'll, so you guys got to learn how to do this, and we got to wake up Zordon. And then Zordon's like, okay, here's the deal. I need to exploit your morphing abilities, which generates the morphing grid where I can then step through this dimensional, like, purgatory I'm in into the real world yes. and battle Rita. Like, that was his side plot plan. Mm -hmm. By doing that, it makes his character, like, hard to trust, but not really because he's just, like, if he's just there to come and help and do it himself, like, that doesn't seem so bad. Like, he knows how to fight, and he's done this before, and he has, he knows, like, tactically, like, how Rita works, so he could probably be a pretty good probably ally. Probably be a good help, right? Instead, he decides to use the energy with which he could use to cross over into the real world to resurrect a human boy from death. Who has shown that they're not good... At doing what they're supposed no, to be doing. No, they're bad at what they're doing, and also the world is 
on a time crunch of it's going to end. Yes. And he chooses to resurrect this child instead, which it's crazy that that those powers equate. Like yeah. you can either st- like those things don't sit on the same scale of justice. Like you can either walk through this dimensional portal or you can resurrect a human being who's who's passed on. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, speaking of that character, there's a ambiguously lesbian yellow ranger. I say ambiguously because the movie wasn't brave enough to just be like, yeah, I'm a lesbian, so yeah. fuck you. Like, didn't do that. It they just kind of really beat around, around the bush. It. Yeah. They, no pun intended. They beat around the... Did I say beat around the butch? That's even better. Okay. <laughs> so. Damn, fuck. I'm on fire. Um, <laughs> sorry, everyone. So they're at this campfire scene. They're they're having their conversation. They're like, how did you get here? Oh, I can tape all your butt cheeks together. Like they're doing the full on breakfast club thing. Yeah. And they're like, what about you, Yellow Ranger? You don't want to ever say anything. And she's like, yeah, well, you know, my parents, like they got these expectations for me, but I'm like trails off. And, like, you know, they want me to talk more, like, trails off. And, like, maybe hang out with more trails off. I'm like, come on. Like, commit to this. If you're going to, if you're going to, if the Twitter's verse is going to explode, like, oh, there's a, there's a gay, openly gay Power Ranger, then be openly gay in your movie. Like, don't well, give us our character. It's just the same thing with Beauty and the Beast. These movies, I feel like they're trying to gain favor with the Twitter verse where they're like, see, mm-hmm. we, look how progressive we are. And then you go see it. It's like, execution you son is, of a bitch. is yeah. It's like that's not what was advertised here. Like commit to this. This is this is great stuff if you do it with like any spine. Yeah. On the other end of the spectrum, the, the autism spectrum. The, the autism spectrum. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I thought he was really well done. Yeah. Oh yeah. That kid was great playing him, and that character was well written, and I liked that they didn't dwell in like whatever negative implications exist around that. S- that kind of like stigma of like, oh, autism it means you can't do this and it can't do this. Yeah. It really was all about like what he could do and what he could even do better than everybody yeah. else. Well, and they didn't like Rain Man it either, where he's right. just like, you're good at like counting numbers or something like that. And right. just like made him, that's his like gimmick the whole time. Like, yeah. He, he was, it was a little more, um, it was a little more thought out than just that. Well, it was his, like, social Achilles heel, but, like, his, like... I mean, for instance, he was the one who figured out where the coin in the earth was, which makes absolutely no sense, no. but it's just, like, okay, his attention to detail, I guess. I don't know. He figured well, and it and out. he's kind of the heart of the team, too, where mm. he's, like, I really like you guys as friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should hang out more. Like, he's the Anthony Michael Hall of the Power Rangers. Right. Yeah, I think it was a good portrayal of that type of character, whereas the Yellow Ranger, like, she needed to be able to, like, just, you know, come out with it and be... She should have came out. She should have come out. I'm not saying, like, she needed to, like, hit on the Pink Ranger. I just think it would have been... At least say you're into girls. And, like, and I'm trying to be, like, sensitive to the fact that her character, like, didn't want to come out and say anything either. She was just, like, a secretive character. She just, like, had her stuff that's true. on lockdown, which is fine. And maybe that's the fun of the game for, like, if you're an audience member and you're, like, a little kid and you're like, God, I might be I might be kind of like the Yellow Ranger. Then that's, like, an, a better identifying, like, relationship to have with this character on the screen versus, like, hey, kids, I'm openly gay and this is how you gotta be if you're gonna be like me. Like, right, right. You know, maybe well, that's fine. And I guess around that age, too, like, high school and stuff, too, it is kind of still... Is when people are kind of making those decisions. Like, sure. This, uh, I'm going to come out. I'm going to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they did fine. Maybe they did fine. Or yeah. It won't be the first time we're wrong about something. <laughs> it didn't convince me to be a lesbian or a Power Ranger, so maybe I'm the wrong demographic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last thing I want to talk about this film, mm-hmm. and it's the big one. Out of all the things the film did well, which is amazing that it did anything well. Yeah. And all the things it did wrong, which is a lot, and a lot of nitpicks, mm-hmm. there's the big one. Which is? That was the worst blatant advertising I have ever seen in <laughs> any film. <laughs> for the donut? For the, for the Krispy Kreme <laughs> donut. <laughs> like, any positive feelings I, I had about that. this film, <laughs> like... I think about the Krispy Kreme stuff, mm-hmm. and there's just a burning, like, <laughs> hatred inside of me that just, like, kills me a little bit every time I think about it. I've never seen something that blatant before. It was, like, I mean, in, it's funny because, like, in Back to the Future 2, when it's like, oh, I have a Pepsi, you know, or whatever, like, that stuff is, like, 
it's meant to be funny. Right. And in this, it was like, I could see them trying to do the same thing. We're like, oh, Krispy Kreme. Rita's not a Krispy Kreme. She's just eating donuts. Right. She's supposed to be destroying the world. And Isn't this hilarious? It's like Wayne, that movie, uh, Back to the Future and like Wayne's World. Mm. They like ruined it. Uh, Wayne's yeah, yeah, World yeah. was like the perfect they yeah. did. They did it in such a meta funny way. I can't talk about it. It's and giving now, me a headache. <laughs> and now you have people. Yeah, they tried to make. Krispy Kreme's a funny thing. But the shot of her in the middle of the destruction, mm-hmm. they cut to her sitting down in the Krispy Kreme, mm-hmm. eating a donut, basically looking at the audience yeah. and, like, winking. And, like, Destiny's Child, like, Survivors playing or something like that. Like, yeah, very bizarre beat for the movie to, like, linger on when you I, do. Well, and then it works because the first thing I... S- I heard someone say after the movie credits went up was, could really go for some Krispy Kremes. Mm, so it did work. It did work. Damn That's it. marketing, man. Nobody knows how it works. It just does. Uh, should we talk about the guy who was dressed like a Power Ranger in our screening? Oh, that's right. I forgot about him. I was so busy chowing down on my fucking spicy icy and my icy. spicy icy and my large popcorn. I need to not eat at the movie theater anymore. We gotta stop the spicy one. icy. It's an addiction now. Yeah. It's really having negative impacts on my on life. Your... Boy who rolled in with his squad of homies and was dressed as the Red Ranger. Full on. And I'm not talking PJs or like a t-shirt. No. But it. I'm lumping this in in my head with I've experienced a lot of this lately where someone will r- roll up into the new Marvel movie in a Pikachu onesie yeah. or a unicorn pajama pant get up <laughs> and they're doing it and they're like all eyes are on me. They're so stoked at like yes. how funny they're being and like how ironic but post ironic it is that they're confident young men wandering around in <laughs> kitty pajamas. Uh-huh. I I what I love about this guy's outfit, one, I, I'm separating <laughs> him from these other people. Okay. Because I think he was just legit the biggest Power Ranger fan in the world. Because okay. here's, here's why. One, we did not see this opening day. This no. film had been out for at least a week. Yeah. Two, this was not like a midnight showing. This wasn't like a, a hot time zone. It was like a random time yeah. in the middle of the week. Mm-hmm. Not on a Saturday or Sunday. And this guy's like, I'm so... So passionate about Orion. It was probably like the 10th time he'd seen it. That's probably a good point. Yeah. Because why else would you not go? If you love Power Rangers that much and you have a suit and you're wearing it to the theater, why would you not go opening day? Yeah, exactly. Unless unless you have seen it 10 times. Yeah. And he's trying to break those Titanic records. Yeah, and the ticket taker is just like, fucking 15th time, dude, I'm going to beat your ass the next time <laughs> And I every see time you. he's going as a different ranger. Ah, so, well, okay. I'll give him points for that. Yeah, don't, don't, kids, kids. don't dress up kids. to the not premiere of a, of a movie. It's not a good look, and I know you think you're being clever, but you got to learn to just go out into society with your fucking head down, not engaging anyone, not getting attention from anybody, and just going through life, uh, you know, a, 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 with the knowledge in your brain that nobody wants you here. You're not fucking special. You're not fucking funny. You're not contributing anything. You're just a, like, walking, talking, bumbling, memeing, phone fondling piece of shit. Uh, Sean. Yes. This is why... You will never morph. <laughs> I have definitely dressed up in a theater. I was definitely um, the guy, the black guy from Hunger Games. Okay. Uh, Lenny Kravitz. Oh man. I dressed up like him. His so you costume, had like split leather pants with I mean, your dick out. Yeah, I think I just wore like a blue shirt and like he has a necklace. So uh-huh. I just wore a necklace. I was like, I'm the black guy from the movie. <sighs> you know him, the main guy. <laughs> Um, okay, and how did of, you feel when you did this? I felt great, Sean. All right. The culture's changed, though, because you used to have... The movies would play one time at midnight on, on like, Thursday. Oh, and for, so, oh, for premieres. For opening night yeah. premieres. Okay. And so it was kind of like you had the nerdiest of the nerds. Yeah. And so, like, everyone was dressing up. Line up and so if you dressed up, favorite. it wasn't a big deal. Okay. Nowadays, they're playing, like, four showings Mm -hmm. at all times of day. Right. And so there is no, like, midnight premiere anymore. 
And so now when people dress up, it's a lot more spread out. Yeah, and it's you not can't, the concentrated it's, enthusiasm. It's not, yeah, it's not containing the nerdness. Yeah. I just, you know. Maybe we should try it one day, Sean. Like, maybe we'll do, let's do some pledge goals, right? So, <laughs> you pledge so-and-so amount to the movie babies. Sean will cosplay oh my God. to your pick of your favorite movie in the theaters. I love this idea. All right. Twitter, Twitter, tweeters. <laughs> let's give it a shot. Well, Sean... That's all I got to say about Power Rangers. Man, we're so insightful. <laughs> Some of just the comic timing, yeah. and you couldn't write this stuff. Who knew two adults would have so much to say about a children's show? Yeah, it's a bad look that we have, like, really heated opinions about children's shows and teenage pop music and, like... It's what we specify in. <laughs> Listen to us on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever podcasts are sold to you for free. And check out moviebabies.com for information regarding our whereabouts, favorite foods, uh, sexual proclivities. I don't know what that means. Well, Sean, I'll, I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. Join us next week <laughs> for a full-length episode okay and let me tell you something i'll be there what's up it's gonna be it's gonna be something oh can't wait that's i the promises of entertainment is that what i'm hearing it might be the end of the movie babies damn it might be the show that gets us pulled from the air <gasps> cliffhanger it's a cliffhanger subscribe listen to next week's episode it's gonna be big 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 